I want you to pick like a historical figure or a piece of architecture. So give me a, like a historical figure to work with. Somebody pick something and, and that's the person I'll use for this demonstration. Throw out some names of historical figures. All right, so I would do a search for David Bowie. So I have a bunch of David Bowies to choose from. So let's say I'll pick one. So I'll pick this David Bowie. So I'm just gonna copy the image from my image, image search here. Uh, and then paste it right into Illustrator. So I have David Bowie here. Yeah, let me just clean up some stuff. So for this next assignment, we'll be using something called Image Trace. So whenever you bring in pixels into Illustrator and you have the control bar available on top, and also it's available in your properties menu as well. But that's why I like using the control bar because it's a little easier to see and it gives you more options than properties. So if you don't have your control bar, you go to Windows and you just click on control. But whenever you bring in a pixel-based image, it's going to give you an option to image trace. And so you have an image trace button right here. So you click on that and you'll get instant vectors. It may not be what you want. So you have um, presets here that you can explore. So you have like a shades of gray preset. Um, but for this assignment, I really want you to stick with this default. And then the other thing you can do though to adjust this is you click on this icon next to default and it lets you change like the levels of black and white. So if you drag this in different ways, you can start to get a better image out of it depending on how far you drag it. So it's basically looking at the image and it's changing the image to like a black and white image and it's changing the concentration of uh, black and white on that image. And then you can even kind of push it further. You go into advance and you can kind of adjust it even further. And so once you get something that you'd like, so this is where you do it though. You click on this little uh, icon here next to preset and you can adjust it. And then once you get something that you like, you hit expand, you have to hit expand because right now you can't really change anything in the image. It's like this solid piece of artwork. Once you hit expand, you can go in here with your direct selection tool and start to play with the image a little bit. So for this, um, like if I want to get rid of the back, the background that's black and the way that this tool works, um, everything is connected. So if I like shift that around, it's really going to change things. Or if I delete it, you know, I lose a lot. So what you can do though, if you want to get like an outline around him, you can use this eraser tool. So here is the eraser tool. Um, shift E is the shortcut. And the eraser tool kind of works like the brush tool, where if you click on your square bracket keys, you can make it bigger or smaller. And then you can kind of carve into it. So you just get like an outline. So you just kind of carving into that. And then once you do, you know, I'm just kind of cleaning it up. And then the idea is to start to um, think about different fonts that would work to describe this person in history. Um, so if this was Bowie from the late 60s, early 70s, you would start to think about fonts from the late sixties and early seventies and do some research. And how do, how do you bring those fonts into illustrator is going to be the challenge. So if you go to type, you go to more from Adobe fonts 
And what I'll have to ask is anybody who's using the Illustrator software from PCC where you're going into the, the, um, the web to use the Creative Suite, we'll have to make sure that this works. I think it should, but if you go to type more fonts from Adobe, if you already have the Creative Cloud, maybe, maybe you've already done this, um, you go into, you're in Typekit, and now you can start to pick different fonts. Um, now, if you, you know, we'll kind of go through like the, the history of fonts, um, but funky, it's probably a little bit more from the 60s. Um, you know, some of the more kind of psychedelic looking fonts. Well, let's say I want to use, um, let's say, um, I'll just pick this Ono Blaze. So you just click on that font and you activate it. And then once you activate that font, it usually takes like a couple minutes, but it should um, appear here in your font library. And usually the fonts from Typekit are gonna have a little cloud icon. So let's see if it's here. And sometimes it takes a while for these fonts to show up. So here it is, Ono oh Blaze. So So there it is. So We'll go through like font history and, you know, different eras for different types of fonts. Um, you know, I have some different resources that I'll put inside of Canvas. So um, we'll play with this in different ways. But for the assignment, you know, I'm going to have you combine the font and the image together in different ways and you can outline the font. The other thing you can do is you can select part of the artwork. And basically this is selecting all of it because it's one piece. So maybe I wanna cut some pieces apart. So I can go and use that eraser tool again. And create different sections here. So I'm just gonna kind of cut through pieces. And it looks like, so like cut through that piece. And then now if I select a piece, I can tell that it's um, not connected with everything else. Sometimes, you know, I'll just put a color in there. Maybe I want to, um, So I'm just using the erase tool to get rid of some of those vectors. So now I have this section. So another thing you can do is you can fill an area with type. So if you go to your toolbar, go to your type tool and click on this area type tool and just click on a section. Sometimes you have to click on an edge. Um, one thing that might happen is you get this error about non-compound path. So what you do there is if it comes up, that non-compound path error, error, you go to object, compound paths and release. Let's see. And now it works. So with this, for the fonts, there's a couple keyboard shortcuts that are going to be good to know. And one is, um, shift command or shift control and it's your comma and period key to make the font smaller you hit shift command comma if you're on a mac shift control comma on a pc and if you want to make it bigger um you hit shift command period or shift control period if you're on a pc and so you can fill sections with type 
So if you, let's see. And if you go to type and fill with placeholder text here, it will fill the whole thing up instantly. Um, so if I make the font really small and they go to type and fill with placeholder text, it starts to fill up these areas. I would kind of want you to take um, words that relate to the image. So maybe it's like lyrics from a David Bowie song goes into that section. But you can kind of do that throughout, you know, with these different pieces, you know, go to different sections, select them, use your um, type tool. You probably do have to go to compound path and hit release first. And then um, just use that tool. Um, use the uh, fill with type tool here. And go to type and then fill with uh, placeholder text. So you can start to recreate that image um, with type. So that's the idea for that assignment. So um, I'll have more information though next week. I'm just kind of giving you a preview of, of a couple different tools that I want you to use. Um, image tracing, um, converting type to outlines, but I'll get into more, more details. But is there any questions about some of these um, techniques that I'm doing here, creating? So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of what I wanted to show you tonight. Just a couple more things we can do with. Um, Will this one be um, just black and white or grayscale? Is, is that is grayscale good for this too or no? Um, yeah, you can do grayscale for this one as well. I think sometimes it's better to have it black and white. It depends. Um, it depends on what you want to do. And you don't have to fill it all with type and you can kind of do a combination of type and vectors. Sometimes black and white just is more powerful when it's just black and white like that. Um, in graphic design, too, um, when you have text, there's this implied grayness to the text when it is um, grouped together in a certain way. So you have your, your letting is the spacing between lines of text. That's what your letting is. When you have more letting between lines of text, it conveys like a, a lighter color, a lighter density of text. Um, so it can read as like a lighter or darker. But yeah, you can, um, yeah, if you want to use um, grayscales uh, for this one, that's fine. I'm trying to stay away from color until we get more into color um, in a couple weeks when we start to focus more on color. Thanks. Yep. So any other questions? Um, so there's a lot of different techniques to play with. Um, for this assignment, another one real quick is just type on a path. So with the pen tool, if I drag out some paths here and go into my type tool. And if you just hover over any path while you're in the type tool, the type tool icon changes. So it becomes a cursor with a wavy line through it. And then you click on that text and then you can put text on that curve. So something to explore in this assignment too is um, text on a path. So you just got to click on the type tool 
click on the text, and then you got this flowing text. So things to think about too are scale with this. So if you have a lot of small bunched up text, you know, think about playing with contrasts and scale. So you know, maybe you have some you know very large letter forms too that work with this in some way. And a good shortcut to remember is convert to outline. So shift um, command O is the keyboard shortcut for sh um, convert to outlines. Because sometimes you use that a lot. Um, and here too, if I grab all this and go to my say shape builder tool, Here, I think grayscale would kind of be kind of nice to use um, if you use this live paint tool. And it, it's giving me that compound error path again. So you might have to go to compound path and hit release. It doesn't like it. So sometimes too, what you might have to do, if you do find that things are not working, go to object and hit expand and just expand everything. And then go back into the shape builder tool here. And I think now too, um, when you work with text like this and you start to outline lots of text, it really starts to bog down the computer because you have so many um, vector points to work with. So it might be slow um, if you have a lot of text that you're playing with. It might even like crash on you if you're getting too crazy. Let's see if it does it. But yeah, you know, just play with like scale, fill things with text, explore like extremes. You got rid of too much. No, it's. Um, But you'll find like all these interesting things happen when you really start to experiment and combine things in different ways and you know just kind of be very loose with the process um you know if you the less you strive for perfection i think the more interesting things will happen that you'll be surprised to see these combinations of things that you didn't even think about so let it do its thing okay um, yeah, and I wanted to go back into the my paint tool and fill some of this with some gray. I think that would be interesting. But it's really, it's, there's a lot in this. Uh, all that small text is really making it go slow. Another thing that, you know, you should do too, if it is going slow like this, is in your layers, start to think about separating things layer by layer to make the workflow easier. So um, if I go into my layers and I think the type here, for example, is like really bogging it down. So I'll use my direct um, selection tool and grab that type and do a command X Command cut or control X on a PC. Um, cut that type that was outlined because it has a lot of points in it now on those vectors. 
create a new layer and then select that layer and hit command F or control F and that is paste in front. And then for the stuff that's really busy and have, a, you have a lot of detail there, hide it. So I'm going to hide it. And oops, maybe it didn't do it in the right layer. Yeah. It went back into Sometimes you have to lock the layers too, and then select the layer you want. There you go. Um, hide it and then go back and use the tools that you need to do use to make this um, work a little faster. Yeah, yeah and all this text here now Two is also converted to outlines as well. So that's another reason why it's gonna um, maybe go slow. So it's getting really detailed. So when you have a lot of text, just think about using additional layers to organize things. Oops, that really kind of screwed it up. So anyways, that's kind of what I wanted to show you tonight um those additional techniques i'll take this video and i will post it and i will also put it inside the next unit um so you, you can see some of this again as you work through this but it's pretty a lot of this is pretty straightforward i think you have some good experience now with the pen tools um so now it's going to be more about focusing on organizing your art keeping things on different layers and just like workflow and process, you know, so that you can do what you want without the computer, like totally slowing down on you when you get into areas of like very high detail. So yeah, so that's pretty much all I was going to talk about. Is there any other questions or anything? Thoughts, concerns? No, Christian? thanks. So, all right. So yeah, so um, yeah, that's it for tonight. Um, if you have any other, you know, as you're working through assignment three, you know, and you have any other questions about some of those tools, just send me a message on Discord and I usually answer right away. Um, and yeah, that's all I, I got to have for you tonight. So um, have a good night and I most likely we'll have the next um, Zoom on uh, next Thursday and on Tuesday, I will reveal the uh, next unit, um, which is gonna focus on typography and this assignment where you're combining type and image together. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Have a good night.